to In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Do, I have, do I have a volunteer for the lighting? For that? Lighting the candles? Um, I think anyone you ask will right. I know they will. I'll yes. tell Mark his mic still. So. I can preach or we can just listen to Mark preach to the kids. And he's still got his mic on. You can light one and she can light the other. Is that okay? All right. You start with the right one, right? Huh? You start with the right one. That'd be good. If it was Halloween, that might be spooky. Turn the microphone off. Thank you. Did you know that the first rector of St. James's Dr. Adam Empey, who preached his first sermon here in 1837, that he was the first chaplain of the United States Military Academy at West Point, and that he had been the former rector of Bruton Parish and the president of the College of William and Mary. Did you know that the women of St. James's started their first bazaar in 1839 when the ladies' sewing circle held a three-day fair selling, quote, useful and fancy articles calculated to please the palate as well as to gratify the taste, end quote. Those faithful women raised $800, quite a sum of money in that day, to benefit the purchase of our church's very first organ. Did you know that fire not only broke out at St. James's in July of 1994, but also in November of 1835? Did you know that General Jeb Stewart was buried from St. James's in 1864, and that the rector at the time, Dr. Joshua Peterkin, who was here for 37 years, sang Rock of Ages to the general as he lay dying? Did you know that a member of St. James's, Sally Louisa Tompkins, was the only woman officer in the Confederate Army? So honored because of her skills as a nurse and a healer. Captain Sally, as she was known, opened her first hospital in Richmond in 1861. And by 1865, she had lost only 73 of the 1,333 soldiers she cared for. She has her own stained glass window within our church. Did you know that because of the good work of Mrs. Etta Ambler, the Secretary for Religious Education at St. James's, for almost 20 years, that in 1937, the Sunday school had an average Sunday school class attendance of 390 children. Did you know that I am not superstitious, although I am the 13th rector of St. James's? <laughs> and that over 50 members of the clergy have served this church since 1835. Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from, wrote St. John in the book of Revelation. These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd." And he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The saints, they are all around us. The history of this church, the history of Christianity is one long string of saints who have lived and loved, sinned, and served God. We stand upon their shoulders and we honor them this morning, all the saints, both living and dead. Today we celebrate the lives of the new saints, 
with those who are being baptized this morning and by parading all the wonderful baptismal banners around the church for so many children who have been baptized this past year. Those beautiful babies washed in the waters of baptism this today represent the newest strands of saints, freshly woven into that long string of Christians who have struggled to serve Jesus Christ for more than 2,000 years. They are the leading edge of a long procession of which we are all a part. Today we also honor the saints who have died in the past year. All those men and women who have come through the great ordeal, as St. John says, and we lift up their names to God. Whenever we recite the baptismal covenant, as we will this morning, we proclaim that we believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. What does this mean, the communion of saints? Simply put, the communion of saints is the fellowship of forgiven sinners who are continually receiving the grace of God and word and sacrament. In short, we are the communion of saints. All those good people who struggled and sacrificed to build St. James's in 1835 are the communion of saints. All those men and women who have followed Christ for 2,000 years are the communion of saints. And to believe in the communion of saints is to believe that all of us who call ourselves Christians are connected to one another connected to one another by virtue of being connected to that sacred mystery that lies at the heart of the world. Saints are usually ordinary folk. While there are extraordinary saints like James and John, Peter and Paul, Mary Magdalene and Mother Teresa, most of the saints are quite rank and file. As that great little hymn says, Amen. <laughs> As that great little hymn says, saints are the people you can meet in schools or in lanes or a tea in church or in trains or in shops or a tea. They are folks just like me. Their distinctiveness lies in the fact that they have placed themselves in the hands of an extraordinary God. So today, ask yourself this question, who are your saints? Who are the people whose faith and integrity has enriched your life and helped to form you as a better person? Remember them today. Give thanks for them. They are priceless in our lives. I have many saints, teachers, coaches, camp counselors, scout leaders, professors, priests, relatives, people who have taught me something about what it means to be a man of honor, what it means to be a person of courage, person of faith. Not one of them was perfect. All of them were sinners but each of them added something crucial to the story of my life. I am who I am because of the gifts that they were willing to give to me. The truth of the matter is you and I are the saints who are wedged in between the newly baptized and the faithful departed. And the good news for all of us is that through our worship and our prayers, we are being made and shall be made holy by the grace of God. Like all the saints who have gone before, I don't know about you, but I think we too are sinful and in need of God's forgiveness. And like all the saints who have gone before, we have our jobs to do. Someone once said that it's not what we do for God that counts, but what God does through us that counts. As the living saints of the current generation, it's our job to let God work through our lives. 
It's our job to be saints for others in such a way that we can share the gifts given to us by the saints who have gone before. Never forget that we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. The people of this church for the past 180 years are about a very small part of the larger Christian story. But that story is our story. This is our time, our opportunity to add our small contributions to this larger epic. May God give us the grace. May God give us the courage. May God give us the will to live up to those saints who have gone before while we leave our own lasting legacy for those who will follow. Amen.